It's about 100 years ago, and this dam was installed as a mill pond dam. So it was intended to hold the water and allow the cut trees to get splash dammed into the pond, and then they, were, they would stage here to be processed and ultimately harvested. That dam lasted somewhere around 10 years before they decided to replace that dam with a concrete dam that was built in the 1920s. There was a three and a half mile wooden flume that connected Mill Pond to the powerhouse, which is located uh, near the mouth of Sullivan Creek. In 1957, uh, the flume froze, and I believe that was the last time, the last power that was made. It wasn't an operation when we bought it. We just um, purchased it for the potential and um, there was never, uh, it was never cost effective to um, start it back up again. The flume is gone, the hydropower generating facility is gone, the need is gone. Our license um, release conditions said the dam needed to be removed and other restoration measures needed to happen. Seattle City Light had to renew their license to operate Boundary Dam. They had requirements to do the similar restoration measures, so it worked really well for both entities to team up and get this project done. It's exciting to know that we are reestablishing some um, important fish habitat. It is disappointing for many of the locals to remove a flat water uh, boating opportunity that's here. Just a beautiful body of water. We uh, kayak on it. In fact, we kayaked on it about two weeks ago. Hate to see it go. The local community was able to come in during the design phase. They came to our public meetings and they offered opinions. Throughout the process, everyone recognized what the end goal was. Everyone wanted this to become the best project that we possibly could have. So all of the agencies involved knew that they played an integral role in providing City Light the opportunity and the capacity to be able to pull this project off in the best possible way. Although we're losing an asset in what is Mill Pond, we're gaining an asset. We're gonna see this become a mosaic of floodplains, channels, wetlands. So this campground right here is going to be upgraded a bit, but there'll also be some additional trails put in and a long bridge. It's definitely reduced the burden on local ratepayers um, being able to partner with Seattle on this. What is the most natural setting that we can get out of here? What did the landscape used to look like? How can we reset those? fundamental elements of a vibrant ecology. Phase one is to begin to remove the log crib dam. Once we've removed the top portion of the log crib dam, we'll be able to go and begin to hammer uh, and remove the concrete dam behind it. We're letting the sediment move back down river. And as it moves through the dam site, it'll then replenish the small gravels that have been missing for 100 years. There'll be a large component of stream restoration and uh, replanting at the, in the fall of 2018. So we've learned a lot in the last handful of years with some of the big dam removals, particularly the Elwha River, about how to bring successful, aggressive, vibrant revegetation to bear. We truly are committed to this project. We're truly committed to habitat restoration. We're truly committed to making this the best possible site that we can. Hey.